normally what happens is you get chucked out in opposition for a while. You actually have time to think um, and talk to other people. And that's when ideas really start to emerge. It was always really noticeable to me that the people who did the best and, and were most radical and most effective in government were always the people who had the chance to think about the same subjects in opposition. Of course, governments get tired and need to go out and rethink and come back. That's, that's, that's a sort of natural cycle that is stymied at the moment. I think that the difficulty the Conservative Party has um, is the same that other parties have, which is that they are a response to a society which doesn't exist anymore. The Conservative Party and Labour came out of an industrial society which is stratified by by class and it was a response to economic circumstances and since they were founded a lot has happened and you know I would point to four enormous changes which have changed the nature of our politics and which I think um, the main parties are struggling to grapple with. One is um, mass demographic change, you know, this is a very 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 different country, it's much more diverse. Second massive change which is I think the most neglected uh, force in our politics, not nearly enough attention is given to it, is mass education. In the 1960s, I think about 200,000 people went to university. It's now closer to about 2 million. If you look at the number of non-graduates in, in uh, politics, uh, in parliament, it's very, very, very low. If you look at the surest predictor of whether or not people would vote for Brexit, it was that they weren't people that went to university. That's not because if you vote for Brexit, you're stupid. It's because if you go to university, it gives you certain things that make you more likely to vote Remain. The third big change is ageing. You know, we are a really, really old society. Power is shifting to the east. Why is that happening? It's because the east is young. You know, the west is a is an old idea now, and it's run by old people. And then the fourth big change is technology, and technology is basically part of this sense that uh, things are speeding up. We live through this great acceleration, and people have, have lost this sort of sense of control. I think that the the, that the party will, in its own terms. Um, make a rational choice uh, 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 between the candidates that are on offer. Yes, and I, and I tell you why, it's because, it's because they, the, the, the party was sort of presented with Theresa May as leader, uh, and, and, and the sentiment of the party in 2016 after the referendum was, Boris won the referendum, let's be clear, without Boris joining the Leave campaign, Leave would not have won. He was an absolute, he was the first mainstream politician to join the Leave campaign. He was hugely powerful and influential. So the point is the Conservative membership, if given the choice in 2016, would have had him because yes. they'd have said, well, this is the guy that wanted. And go on, you go and sort it out. You've told us it's all going to be a route. Go, go sort it out. So we ought to go back to the guy who told us it was all going to be milk and honey and you know, the promised land and see what he can do. The difference in political parties now is that do you want there to be, you know, what you know, Rachel was talking about an intellectual hub and people with policy ideas, and that's always gone on completely distinctly from the, it's great to have a big infrastructure of people who deliver leaflets once a year and show up at fundraisers, and you need that thing. And, and what TIG didn't have, or Change or whatever they're called, is any of that. They had not the slightest clue how to invent a political party. All they had a clue to do is how to do photo ops and do a, have a pressure group. And I think for the Conservatives, you know, it is possible that Boris can marry those two things. I think Margaret Thatcher was the first, one of the first politicians who actually understood climate change. And I mean, I wonder if we ever get beyond where we are now, but the biggest political question in the next 30 years is now we've committed to a zero carbon economy by 2050, how the hell are we going to do it? Yeah, yeah.